Hello, ladies and gents, and welcome to Kirby's Adventure. Uh, oh, wait. Did Kirby just get slapped with a paintbrush? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, actually, actually, um, first, before, before we get uh, completely into Kirby's Adventure, rest in peace, Iwata. Yeah, this, this Let's Play is kind of somewhat dedicated to Iwata's passing that happened, well, not too recently ago, but you know. So, for those who do not know, uh, Iwata was actually the creator of Kirby. And so... Wasn't he co-creator? Like... No, I think he actually designed the, the character with a little help with, with uh, Miyamoto. Oh. If I remember correctly. But, uh, um... The thing is, well... For, Cur for Kirby, he was initially supposed to be gray. No, like he initially he wants to give him a color like yellow. He was he was really supposed to be yellow, but then they gave him gray because of the Game Boy colors. And then, uh, and then uh, pretty much when and then when they got to this game, they decided to make him pink. Ah, so they changed. Uh, so they just changed up his colors through the conceptual yeah. stages. Pretty much. Yeah, I remember the, like the Dreamland, the uh, cover for Dreamland has him gray, right? Uh, exactly. yeah. But in the American oh. version, though, he's not pissed, so it can be canonical. <laughs> oh yeah, the American uh, American Kirby is hardcore. I don't understand why they do that. <laughs> to piece to the MLGs. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo uh, Nintendo know. knows which crowd to sell to. Only the most uh, core of the hardcore play Kirby. Oh, definitely. So uh, they also released this game as a 3D classic, which. As far as I as far as I know, it just fixes the lag and um, gives gives the background like gradients. And that's it. Uh, that's it. <laughs> you went oh, well. the crane and I didn't see it. Oh, crane mini game. Yes. So uh, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to grab one of the curb one of these two Kirby's and hope that it actually makes it to the. Uh, to the dispenser, <laughs> but the game didn't. The game didn't want you to do that. Yeah, the bigger, the bigger, the bigger ones are the hardest to grab. The smaller ones are easier. Is there any trick to like grabbing bigger ones? Like, nope. Um, RNG. Ah. <laughs> well, I, I guess a, a bonus is a bonus, nonetheless. Well, it doesn't really matter because once you set the game, your lives reset. Oh God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> The one thing I kind of didn't like in the early in the, in the earlier games, like if you, if they have a save feature, the trade-off is, is that whatever you used to have in your previous save will, will not actually be saved. Yeah, that that, that did kind of suck. Super Mario World is really annoying for that. The times you make those long treks all the way back to uh back to the little to the secret area just to restock all your items and get Yoshi. No one ever. I don't. I don't think many people actually bother end up doing that because it takes so damn long. They're just like fuck it. <laughs> yeah. And your lives cap at 99, but then like if you reset the game, well, it goes back to five. Yeah, it does. I think. I think in the. I think the advanced version, they they changed so you can actually have up to 999 lives. Really? Yeah. They still have reset. No, it doesn't. Oh, oh okay. I don't know who I don't know anyone who'd ever go all the way up to 999 lives though. I did. You actually did that. <laughs> <laughs> Why? There was, time, there was a time when that was the only game I had. So you just decided to max out lives because you were bored. <laughs> max I max out the lives and the score. Because you were bored. <laughs> yes. God damn. It's not until later until I got a bunch of other games to play. Because it, because when I got the Game Boy, when I got the Game Boy Advance, it was the exclusive ones. Oh. Uh, the exclusive black Game Boy Advance, and uh, it came with Super Mario World as a copy, and so my mom didn't bother buying another game. So anyway, uh, about Kirby. Uh, oh yeah, this is the first game that actually gave Kirby the ability to copy um, attacks from enemies. So because of that, you get you get all kinds of um, stuff like the sword, the f you know the fire breath. But unfortunately, they're pretty much they're they're pretty much bare bones. There's not much uh, there's, there's not much variety of attacks you can do on like the on the later games. Well, I mean, it's one of the earlier games. That's to be expected. Yeah. Well, you don't really even then, Kirby kind of didn't need it because <laughs> a lot of the enemies die in one hit anyway. Yeah, they do so. 
Um, this came up uh, before Dreamland 2, right? I think after. After? Because I, I, uh, I think I remember Kirby was able to copy in Dreamland 2. Uh, oh. Hold on, let me check the release then, dates. That, that, I think it's definitely after. Because I, because I think this was because. Actually, do you have a variety of tasks in Dreamland 2? Because the only Dreamland I ever played was one and three. Uh, here I'm checking right now. Kirby's Dreamland 2 came out in 1994, and Kirby's Adventure came out in 1993. So Adventure was before. I, was Adventure was Dreamland 2 a game? Yeah, game? I think it was uh, for the original game. I'm not sure about that though. I don't one. I don't. I don't. I don't one was a Game Boy game. Uh, yeah, uh, three was uh, Super Nintendo. Dreamland 2 is a Game Boy. Yeah, Dreamland 2 was the one I played the most. Well, yeah. I think the game. I think the only Kirby game I played the most was probably Superstar Ultra. Well, the first yeah, the first Kirby game I ever played was uh, was Kirby Superstar. Uh, then the, I. The first one I ever played was uh, Nightmare in Dreamland. Uh, my actual that's first one. one that's a long time. My actual first one was um, and the, the Amazing Mirror. I never beat it. I don't blame you. <laughs> I did. I I, I I played that game too, and I, I've, I've never beaten it. Like really? What what took you? What took you guys to beat I it? was very young when I played it. I had no idea what to do. I was just like, oh. yeah, I was also pretty young, and like I was really confused at like where to go next. Like it has. Yeah. Yeah. That 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 was my biggest problem too. I had no idea where to go. It's like a Metroidvania where like there's no progression in abilities, you know. Um. Well, first of all, I feel old because. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was able to play that game no problem, but uh, the, but then again, when I when I did play Superstar, I really I had a really hard time fighting Marks. Honestly, I never had that big of a trouble with Marks when I did when I well when I played Superstar Ultra, I never had that big of an issue with him. He's, I think they toned him down because I was playing the Super Nintendo version. No, I, I I but I remember even after I played Superstar Ultra, I played the Super Nintendo version too a, a, a while after that. It wasn't really that difficult. He's pretty, he's a pretty easy boss, all things considered. Well, I was again as well as like you guys. I was young at the time, so I guess I was doing some trouble. Cause even even though Kirby Kirby games are generally designed to be easy for kids to play, um, like some of the boss patterns can be really like all over the place. And I think that's just their way of making the game difficult. I don't know, man. The Great Cave Offensive wasn't easy when I was a kid. <laughs> okay, I think all of us have a really different de a different definition of what's difficult in a Kirby game. Yeah. By the way, why did they? Why did it take so long for them to bring back Needle Kirby? Because I know he wasn't in Superstar Ultra. I don't think he was in uh, Return to Dreamland, was he? No, he was. he was. He was. Oh, okay, never mind. But even then, he, that wasn't for like a good like five games, four or five games. Yeah, which out. is weird because I like the Needle Power. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite power ups. Well, it's kind of well. This game's kind of situational because it's, it's generally for like your own defense if the enemy happens to fall on you. Well, still, I still like it. Uh, that was Bad Night back there, right? In this game, is he more of an asshole, or is he, like, kind of ambiguously good? Uh, a bit of both. He's just there. Yeah, he really is. <laughs> there's times he'll try to help you, and there's times that he'll just send his moves after you for, like, no reason. Ah, uh, so he's like DDD, then. Yeah. Also, speaking of DDD, wasn't the plot of this game basically, uh, DDD's trying to save, like, DDD's actually good or something, and Kirby... Oh, no. Oh no, DD is totally bad. Oh, he's still bad. He's he, he's in the wrong game. Huh. He's preventing everyone from having good dreams. But how 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 does he even do that? Um. Okay. Well. The, okay. So the plot of this game is is that uh, basically in in uh, Dreamland there's a place called the Fountain of Dreams, and that's where everyone's dreams um, originate from. Um, the Star Rod is what powers it, and if there is no um, and if the, and if the Star Rod's not there, then it, then no one can have their dreams. Huh. So Kirby's trying to go uh, figure out. Uh, so Kirby wants to go rescue the Star Rod and, you know, beat the crap out of DDD for taking everyone's dreams. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the jerk. The deepest lore.